Welcome to Seaton Carew Golf Club, the 10th oldest in England and a true championship links. The course was created in 1874 from the natural seaside landscape and it became the first golf course in Durham and Yorkshire. Over the years, further improvements have taken place, mainly under the direction of the renowned golf course architects Dr Alistair Mackenzie and Frank Pennick. There are now 22 holes, providing five different layouts, which is quite unique. The club has hosted the English Amateur Stroke Play Championship for the Brabazon Trophy, along with many various other prestigious amateur events. Although surrounded by industry, the course is almost entirely within a site of special scientific interest, part of a national nature reserve. The well-drained soil and proximity to the sea helps to keep the course open all the year round. As with all seaside links, the conditions vary with the weather and particularly the strength and direction of the wind. The firm, fast greens and tight fairway lies present a challenge for all levels of players. To help you enjoy your game more, we produce this flyover, showing the various course layouts together with expert tips on how to play each hole. We hope you find them useful and interesting. The first here at Seaton Crew is a straight, medium-length par four, but you'd be well advised trying to play away from the pond and the outer bounds on the right. But stray too far to the left, and you'll be playing an almost blind shot from the 18th fairway. If you do manage to find the right spot off the tee, your second shot needs to be threaded between two enormous bunkers, and it always plays longer than it appears, so watch what club you play. A flag on either the left or the right edge can leave you a testing first putt on this gently sloping green. The aptly named Long Trail is the longest hole on the course. The fairway slopes from left and the outer bounds continues down the right, so once again, you need to favor the left side off the tee. Now remember, this is a par five, so don't be caught out by the third green off to the left. Your second shot will certainly need to avoid the numerous bunkers surrounding that. Your third will probably be with a short iron over those two menacing cross bunkers about 20 yards or so, short of this two-tier green. Three putts here are quite common, so watch out. This is the first of the par threes and is named after the club's founder, Dr. Duncan McQuaig. It's played from a slightly elevated tee across a series of humps and hollers and back towards the clubhouse. The raised green is well guarded by a total of eight bunkers and slopes deceptively from right to left. Two putts can never be guaranteed, so think before you putt. Turning back into the country, a long carry off the tee is required here, and once again you need to favour the left side to avoid the treacherous dunes down the right. Now if you've got your drive in the right spot, you'll have a much easier approach through a narrow gap to a two-tier green. You'll also need to make sure you have sufficient club to carry that green side bunker there on the right, and, depending on the flag position, to get onto the correct level. Quite a feature here, two-tiered greens. Although you're teeing off over the pond, which gives the hole its name, it really shouldn't come into play on this straightaway par four. The good line, the best line off the tee is just right of center, but that deep cross bunker awaits any mishit approach. And again, a tricky two-tier green means you need to ensure your clubbing is correct to minimize landing <laughs> well into three-putt country. This is a deceptively long par four with fairway bunkers on the left and rough on the right. Ideally, the drive should be just right of center to open up the green, which is offset to the left of the fairway. The difficult second shot needs to be accurately placed between the two shallow greenside bunkers to get the best results. The good thing is the long, narrow green is relatively flat, so a two-putt finish shouldn't be all that difficult. At 222 yards, this is the longest par three on the course. You'll need a straight tee shot, and that will avoid the deep dunes on the right and the deep green side bunkers on the left. If, however, the wind is coming from the north, this hole may well be out of reach. If it's from the south, make sure the green is clear, because you'll reach easily. But be warned, even if you do find this very inviting basin-shaped green, 
You'll still need to give it your full attention to come off with a par. Now a par three, named Mashy. Mashy, what's a Mashy? Well, it's the equivalent of a modern day five iron. And that gives you a bit of a clue as to what you might need on this typical Lynx par three. It's played over rolling dunes to a narrow green, which is guarded by a pop bunker at the front and slightly more shallow one on way on the right. Although reasonably flat, the green still has a few subtle burrows, so uh, they're there to catch the unwary. Now this is a super par four. The fairway sits at an angle of about 30 degrees to the tee. You'll want to drive down the left to avoid the daunting sand hills on the right. The undulating fairway, pull it too far left and you could get an awkward lie amongst the more shallow humps and hollers. The approach shot is played between two deep bunkers and there's another one tucked away along the left-hand side of the green, which will gather anything slightly offline. The green itself sits in a shallow bowl with more steep sand hills bordering the right fringe. This is without doubt a fine example of a classic Mackenzie design. Two putts here are often a bonus. Turning towards the sea, we now come to a truly stunning lynx hole, which is played from a slightly elevated tee to a narrowing fairway. The wonderful backdrop of marum-covered dunes create a natural amphitheater along the entire length of this, well, can I say, beautiful par four. The ideal drive needs to flirt with the umps and ollas down the right because anything to the left of center will be tucked away into the sand hills. Don't go there. A deep swale, oh, about 50 yards or so short of the green, has a foreshortening effect on the approach. So make sure you take enough club because anything short of this two-tier green may well finish up in a small pot bunker to the left or a hollow away on the right. With the long green sloping from back to front, three putts is very much a possibility. This long par five is the only hole on the course where the green can't be seen from the tee and where the wind will decide how much of this sharp dog leg you can safely cut off. Be too greedy and at worst you'll end up in the buckthorn bushes or at best with an awkward lie in the sand dunes. The second shot is played slightly uphill, and if the green is out of reach, a medium iron should eliminate the danger of finding that huge bunker down on the left. If possible, the approach shot should favor the right-hand side of the green, where a small mound will usually send it back towards the hole, and hopefully no more than two putts. This is another outstanding lynx hole where the sea is just a couple of hundred yards away to the right, so visible from the elevated tee. With a narrow fairway stretching out in front of you, the tee shot needs to be as straight as you could possibly make it, although a drive slightly to the right may find uh, safety in a small patch of land between the bushes, but that's a bit of a risk. Whatever you do, try to avoid the mounds of rough down the left-hand side. Most players will certainly be left with at least a mid-iron to this plateau green, which is a bit like an upturned saucer. It certainly demands an accurate approach because both bunkers and those little dips and hollows and swales are waiting to catch the unwary with anything heading left to right. Putts here are invariably uphill, so give it a whack. Make sure you don't leave it short. This is the last of the four holes designed by Frank Pennick. It's an imposing par five, and the tee shot, if you can, should avoid the rough on the left. In fact, the fairway here opens up quite a bit at a good driving distance, so it's much more forgiving than it might appear. With the fairway taking a slight dogleg to the right, the main choice on the second shot is whether or not to take on those cross bunkers. The third shot is played to a generous pear-shaped green, which is slightly raised above the fairway. Whilst an aggressive approach is often rewarded, anything slightly wayward will leave you a very awkward chip. Long hitters will try to take advantage of the birdie opportunity here, but look out for the grass bunkers and hollows on the left and those thick bushes on the right. Straight hitting is a real advantage on this good par five most golfers will probably be hitting a wood or a long iron for their second shot, and although the right-hand side seems much more open, it makes the third a far more difficult proposition. But go too far left, 
and you may find yourself in either of those two large fairway bunkers. When it comes to hitting your approach, just be aware of the deceptively long and narrow green, where the difference between the front and the back flags can be at least three, yes, three clubs. And if you're stuck there, you're definitely in three-putt country. The final four holes at Seton Crew have long been regarded as card wreckers. But, interestingly, they start with what looks like a straightforward par three. Once again, though, all is not what it seems, and club choice is very important, particularly when it can be influenced by the prevailing westerly wind. So, if in doubt, take a longer club, because the bunkers short of the green are definitely not the place to be. Whilst there's rough left and right, that's not friendly either. The green slopes slightly back to front, so two putts, be happy, walk off smiling. This is a long par four played from an elevated tee, and as the fairway dog legs left, there are four very large bunkers and a mass of bushes awaiting a wild tee shot. So unless you're a really big hitter, you'll probably need a wood or a long iron to find this well-protected, large green. Once again, an accurate approach is required if you're to avoid the bunkers left and right. And although the green is relatively flat, it can play quite slow, so make sure you get the putt up to the hole. Don't be afraid. Strike it firm. Be bold. Without doubt, this par four, which dog legs slightly right off the tee, is the signature hole on the course. Whilst the ideal drive should certainly favour the right, anything going too far in that direction will find itself nestling amongst dozens of small little sandhills. Go too far left, and the approach to the green becomes very treacherous indeed. Now, having negotiated the difficult drive, your troubles really begin. Sorry about that. Because the two-tier green is both elevated and offset about 45 degrees. It's also guarded by a total of five, yeah, five fearsome bunkers, and I mean fearsome, and the level change between top and bottom is around six feet. Laying up here is often the wisest option, while three putting is the most common outcome. A dangerous hole. Beware. Use your brains. As we head for home and a well-deserved pint in the clubhouse, another of Seton Crew's long-serving professionals is honoured on this final par four. Now, Bill Hector, a man I knew well, was a no-nonsense sort of chap, and the hole which bears his name is certainly no pushover. Now, you'll definitely want to aim down the left side of the fairway if you can, because anything with a touch of fade could well end up deep in the buckthorn away on the right. Now, this is the only hole on the course that doesn't have any bunkers, but don't be fooled by that. The green is still well protected by a series of natural undulations, which often stop the approach well short of the green. The green itself is quite wide, but not very deep, so try to make sure you don't over-club and run through the back. There's out-of-bounds waiting there. With 18 wonderful holes safely negotiated, it's now time to sample some of the great northern hospitality, which makes Seton Crew such a great place to come and play golf. Always a welcome.